Hello and welcome back. Today I wanted to go through a rather interesting integral that makes use of a few different tricks and techniques. So that's the integral of the cosec of x. So let's get right into it. So cosec, what is that? Let's quickly remind ourselves that that can be written out as 1 over sine of x dx, of course. Okay, so as long as we can remember cosec of x equals 1 over sine x, we're off to a great start. So now we have the integral of 1 over sine x, what do we do here? This is where a lot of people will get stuck. A lot of people are comfortable integrating just sine x, that's fine. But now we have 1 over sine x. So normally you start thinking in logarithms when you end up with something like this. We can't quite get there yet. So what we actually need to do is we actually need to times this whole thing by 1. But the way that we're going to multiply this by 1 is I'm going to say we'll multiply the top by sine of x and we'll multiply the bottom by sine of x. So this way it's the exact same thing as just saying times by 1. So what this now allows us to do is we can now rewrite this problem out as the integral of sine x over sine squared x dx. Okay, so sine squared x, what is that equal to? We do have a very, very famous trig identity, which we should hopefully know. So that's 1 equals sine squared x plus cos squared x. So what that means for us now is that we can rewrite sine squared x as simply 1 minus cos squared x. So let's do that now. So we'll have this all be equal to the integral of sine x over 1 minus cos squared x dx. And there we go. So rather interesting already how we've managed to transform it from simply 1 over sine x to now sine x over 1 minus cos squared x. Okay, so 1 minus cos squared x, this looks a little bit weird, but hopefully you can recognize that this is simply going to be the difference of two squares. So what that means we can do now is we can rewrite this out with a new denominator. So it's still going to be sine x, but now it's going to be over 1 minus cos x times by 1 plus cos x. And again, dx. Okay, so now we've rewritten our denominator out in the two factored uh, terms here. So what we need to do now is identify how can I simplify this any further? Is there any other method that maybe we can expand this out, factorize it differently? What else can we do and manipulate here to work on this problem? And so our answer actually comes from using partial fractions here. So let's take a quick look at just this denominator and let's see what we can do with that. So let's say we've got maybe 1 over 1 minus cos x times by 1 plus cos x. All right. Is there another way that I can rewrite this? Well, certainly there is. I can rewrite this as a over 1 minus cos x plus b 1 plus cos x. So now we, what we need to do is just figure out well, what are a and b. Okay, so to do that, what we want to do is we want to try and break these back into the same terms as we have on the left-hand side. So what I mean by that is let's try and make sure that we have the exact same denominator on both of these two fractions here. So to do that, we'll multiply this left-hand fraction by 1 plus cos of x over 1 plus cos of x. And so what we end up with is a times by 1 plus cos x all over 1 minus cos x 1 plus cos x, okay? And we're going to do the same thing to our right-hand fraction here, but with 1 minus cos x. And so then we end up with b times 1 minus cos x all over uh, 1 minus cos x times by 1 plus cos x. Okay, so what this means now is that since we have the exact same denominator on both sides of 1 minus cos x times by 1 plus cos x, that now means that the numerators must be identical. So they must be equal to each other since there's no other differences within these problems here. So we now must say that 1 is equal to a plus a cos x plus b minus b cos x. Okay, so what we can identify from this is the fact that there's no cos x terms on the left-hand side 
what that must mean now is that a cos x minus b cos x is exactly equal to zero. So what that means for us now is that we can rewrite this as a minus b equals zero. So we can go ahead and call that equation one. And then we can also identify that we only have a one on the left hand side and that must mean that one is equal to a plus b. So we can go ahead and write a plus b equals one. And that's gonna be our second equation there. And so solving these two equations simultaneously, we find that a is equal to one half and b is also equal to one half. Okay, fantastic. So a little bit of work there, but it is really good practice for our partial fractions. So what that means now is that we can go back and rework this entire problem and rewrite it in a little bit of a nicer way. So let's see what that now becomes. So now that would become the integral of sine of x over 2 times by 1 over 1 plus cos x plus 1 over 1 minus cos x and then dx of course. Okay, so you'll notice that I've taken that common factor of 2 out the front, just because it, otherwise I would have had to have written it out like that on the front of, on, on top of each term. So just simplifying that a little bit there. All right, so let's see. That now means we can take that factor of a half out the front of the integral, and then I'll be able to break this down into two separate integrals. So it's now going to be equal to half the integral of sine x over 1 plus cos x dx plus a half of the integral of sine x over one minus cos x dx. So now what we recognize is that we've got sine x on our numerators and cos x on the denominators. So we should hopefully be able to recognize that when we integrate this, now we'll start working with our natural logarithms. So to do that, what we would say is this will now become a half times the natural log of, well, the denominator is one plus cos of x, and our numerator is sine of x. But hang on a second, the derivative of cos of x, or the derivative of this entire denominator, I should say, is negative sine of x. So what we need to do is we actually just need to stick a negative sign out the front there, and now this makes sense. And now for our right-hand uh, term here, we'll have plus half sine x over 1 minus cos x. Well, since that negative sign is already in, that, in front of that cos x, that means that we can simply rewrite this one now as half times the natural log of one minus cos x. Okay, and we shouldn't forget our plus c term here. Okay, so last step here, we can simplify this a little bit further. So first of all, there is a common term of one half, and we should also note that we are taking the difference of two logarithm terms here. So what that means now is that we can rewrite this finally as one half times the natural logarithm of 1 minus cos x all over 1 plus cos x plus c. And that is equal to the integral of cosec of x dx. And there we are. So if you have enjoyed this video or found it useful, please let me know in the comments, leave a like, subscribe, and I hope to see you next time.